Welcome back. As we navigate the coronavirus pandemic, we're learning so much more about the virus every day. But one aspect that still remains a bit of a mystery is long COVID. And according to the American Academy of Neurology, long COVID is now the nation's third leading neurological disorder as the effects all have to do with the brain. And joining me now is someone who's dedicated to researching long COVID and its impact, Dr. Igor Karalnik, a neurologist with Northwestern Medicine. Thank you so much for being here with us. Oh, Doreen, thank you for inviting me. Yeah, this is something you focus so much time on, long COVID. Talk about the symptoms you've specifically looked at and what determines long COVID versus other type of symptoms. Certainly. We have seen now uh, close to 1,600 patients in my NeuroCOVID clinic at Northwestern with long COVID. And long COVID is defined by the CDC as a constellation of symptoms occurring more than four weeks after initial infection with the coronavirus, and they may affect the brain, the heart, the lung, the gut, and other organs. The most frequent symptoms that my patients complain about in the clinic are brain fog, difficulty with concentration, attention, memory, um, headache, dizziness, as well as intense fatigue. And this affects their ability to work as well as their ability to exercise. And uh, this causes decreased quality of life in those patients. And we're seeing these long COVID symptoms on the screen right now. Maybe if you're looking at these, you've said, wait, I've dealt with this. How, when you said four weeks after infection, how long are you seeing some of these symptoms last? So some for some patients, the symptoms resolve in a couple of months, but we have seen patients who came to my clinic in March, 2020, and they still suffer from the same symptoms. Some tend to subside faster than others. For example, disorder of smell and taste, which were very prevalent with the first wave of the coronavirus, mm -hmm. tend to subside over time. But symptoms of cognitive dysfunction, including brain fog and fatigue, tend to last longer in some patients. Okay. And what have you learned as far as the most interesting thing when it comes to those who've been hospitalized, maybe those who've recovered at home? What's the difference here? That's an excellent question. And and these are two very different categories of patients. Those who were hospitalized with severe COVID pneumonia sometimes had to be intubated in the ICU uh, for a severe disease, may have suffered brain damage during their acute illness. On the other hand, there are uh, more than 85% of the patients who come to the clinic had never needed to be hospitalized, had a mild disease like sore throat, a bit of cough, fever that went away, but then developed those debilitating symptoms over time. And the non-hospitalized patients are much younger, a decade younger than the, the ones who are previously hospitalized. They are more frequently female. 70% of those patients are uh, women. Mm -hmm. And we think that long COVID in those patients is a new autoimmune syndrome, since we know that women are more likely than men to be affected by autoimmune disease, such as as multiple sclerosis, rheumatoid arthritis, lupus, and others. Okay, and so you talked about the severity a little bit. Does the severity of your symptoms increase maybe dealing with long COVID? So we see that patients who were previously hospitalized with COVID-19 pneumonia tend to have broader uh, cognitive dysfunction, uh, uh, you know, affecting their ability to concentrate, work, their processing speed, their multitasking abilities, whereas the patients who are never hospitalized uh, with, uh, with COVID-19 tend to have mainly deficit in attention. However, both categories of patients previously hospitalized and never hospitalized uh, suffer from decreased quality of life. And what about those who are vaccinated or boosted? How is that affecting the research? So the hope was that vaccination was going to not only prevent infection, but also prevent long COVID. And unfortunately, it's not the case. We've seen patients who had been infected for the second or the third time, despite vaccination and boosting. And uh, although the rate of developing long COVID, the frequency of long COVID has decreased somewhat in this population, uh, long COVID still occurs in probably at least 15% of uh, patients who've been vaccinated and boosted. That doesn't mean that they shouldn't be because vaccination prevents severe infection, hospitalization, and death, but it doesn't unfortunately prevent long COVID. Mm. And quick thing, I wanna get in one more question here. We have about 20 seconds left. What 
about what we don't know? What is the one thing that you're still looking at? What we really want to know is what is the root cause of long COVID? Why some people get COVID, get over it, and don't have any other symptoms, while some go to the ICU with pneumonia, and some develop long COVID. And we are working intensely in my laboratory to find out what type of autoimmune syndrome is long COVID, how we can detect biomarker or signature in the blood of patients who develop it, and how we can better treat it and prevent it. Well, thank you for your research. I know so many of us want to know so much more about this. Dr. Igor Koralnik of Northwestern Medicine, thank you for being with us. Thank you, Audrina.